To those of you who thought this was some kind of expansion DLC, or to those who thought that this is the legit sequel to Spider-Man PS4, it's not either of those. Hello everyone, this is Darren of Dream Reproductions, and today we are going to be looking at the latest installment in Insomniac's Spider-Man series, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now, if you, like a lot of other people, loved the first Spider-Man game, you are going to love this one just as much. If you played it recently, everything from the combat to the swinging basically carried over hand in hand in this game, so your muscle memory would come in handy. Now, from hearing that, there may be some kind of concern, like, am I just playing the same game but with a Miles reskin? And to that I say... Right? <laughs> Wrong! This game hammers in every chance it gets that you are not playing as Peter Parker. Everything about Miles is vastly different from Peter in every sense of the imagination, and I mean everything. Miles' main theme, the way he fights, the way he swings, the way he uses his powers, all perfectly differentiate Miles from Peter, and we all know the worst thing that Miles could ever be is a Peter Parker clone. I can't put into words how good the soundtrack is. I mean, the music in Spider-Man PS4 was good, but it was still just standard superhero fanfare. This game's music has a cool mix of Spider-Man superhero music, but it also has a cool beat to it at the same time. Miles' swinging in this game completely trumps the last game's swinging mechanics. I didn't think this one could get any better, and it all comes down to the air tricks. Each animation is so perfectly timed and fused together to make it look so fluid when moving through the air. Miles swings like an amateur, but he turns it into his own unique style and flair that, in my opinion, is far better than Peter's. I found out about this on complete accident, but if you do an air trick without watching out for what's below you, you'll just face plant straight into the ground. I love that so much because it not only highlights Miles' learning amateurish nature, but it also gives further incentive to learn how to properly swing around. Just give us the option to turn on fall damage, we have ourselves a perfect game mechanic. The combat, while the same as the original, has so much more flair because of Miles' powers. Miles' Venom Strikes are so much fun to use and how powerful and chaotic they are. I don't know if anyone else experienced this, but it feels to me like when you fight enemies as Miles, there's a bit of a risk-reward system, as in you can use the Venom abilities you have stored up to heal yourself, or you could be ballsy and use them to take out enemies as hard and as fast as you can. And the option to turn invisible is so freaking fun. The stealth in the last game was alright, and turning invisible may seem like a cheat, but it actually adds to the intensity. Especially considering how many enemies they had time to throw at you. And being able to turn invisible mid-combat is a freaking godsend. The side quests in this game are just... eh? Although, one thing I love is the inclusion of the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man app. When you access the app, you can choose a variety of mission requests from people all over the city. Other than the app, the main side stuff you can do is pretty boring. They range from standing around to find stuff in the distance, or just swing to X location to open this random technology crate. There are a ton of those, and they get really boring really quickly. The skins in this game are okay. None of them are bad, but there were only about five that I legitimately liked. But I really shouldn't expect much from Miles Morales, a character who isn't even 10 years old yet. I find it no coincidence that Spider-Verse took place on Christmas, and this game also takes place around Christmas. I'm just saying. The story and the characters, while not as good as the last game, really did help me stick around for this entire game. Miles himself is so enjoyable as a character. This game perfectly shows that Miles Morales really is Spider-Man. Seeing him overcome some of the struggles in front of him, and even how it affects his family and friends, and his home, is perfectly told to give us an emotional connection to him. Now, as an average Miles Morales fan, I only knew Genki Lee by name, I never knew much about his personality or a dynamic with Miles, but this game makes me really enjoy Genki and a lot of the other supporting cast, actually. 
Just like Spider-Verse did for Brooklyn, this game gives Harlem so much personality and character that you start to care for it just as much as Miles does. Everyone from Spider-Man, Teo, Gloria, Haley, Camilla, Caleb are all so enjoyable to meet and get to know. If you didn't bother to play any of the side missions, you don't know half of the people that I just mentioned. But to those of us who did, we all know how differently that last cutscene really hits. Now the villains I have mixed feelings about. I'll just go from best to worst. Now Rhino, and I'm being serious. Although he doesn't play a major role in the story, I can't help but love everything he's a part of. Everything from the opening chase sequence, to the slight callback to the previous game. Yeah! It is Chase of Goose! I hate Chase of Goose! Yeah! You know, man, chasing you through the city kind of felt like a wild, uh, what's the word? Wild yeah! Goose Chase! Wild... To how powerful he can be, he is a joy to have on screen at any given moment. I don't even know if I should count this one as a villain per se, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Aaron Davis as the Prowler in this game is done really well, and I love his inclusion in the story. Every time he was on screen, I was wondering whether they were gonna have him be the kind and supporting uncle from Spider-Verse, or whether he'd be a complete dickbag like he is in the comic. He's a bit of a healthy mix of both, leaning more towards the supportive side. Seeing him want to protect Miles at any cost and seeing how far he would go to do so. Altogether, I do like this interpretation of Prowler and how his relationship with Miles ends off by the finale of the game. Now, here's your spoiler warning, because I'm about to discuss a character who, if you already don't know, like... You know, it's pretty it's pretty spoilery stuff. If you haven't played the game by now or haven't looked at the story, then I suggest you leave. Like, literally everything I review on this channel will be spoiler-filled because I can't properly give my thoughts and opinions, like, on them otherwise. So if you haven't played the game or, like, looked at the cutscenes or look at the story, then, then just get the freak out of here. Finn, a.k.a. The Tinkerer, is someone I have mixed feelings about. First off, I know I wasn't the only one who knew that she was the villain from the very first cutscene, and I'm not talking about the fact that her name is Finn Mason. Her whole attitude and demeanor whenever they bring up her dead brother or Roxxon, it, it was just too obvious. I'm so glad they didn't spend a majority of the story making us question who the identity of the Tinkerer was, when it was blatantly obvious who it already was. The whole, oh my best friend is a big supervillain and I have to stop them but I don't want to fight them type of story is literally a direct retread of what they did in the last game, and I feel like they're gonna do that again in the next game when Venom is introduced. So Insomniac, please do not make this a reoccurring thing. It doesn't even work as well because in the last game we periodically make Otto become more and more insane and we have a lot more time to see his relationship with Peter. But in this game you understand that Miles and Finn have that kind of connection, it's just that we don't get to see all that much of it. I definitely did feel for her and for Miles when it came to losing someone close to you, but I feel like it was just a bit too tacked on in some places and came off a bit too predictable. I like this unique take on the Tinkerer when it comes to her design, skill, and moveset, but Finn as a character was just a mixed bag for me. And then we have Simon Krieger. Now, I could describe this dude in literally three words. Evil business CEO. He is the most bland and by-the-numbers villain that can ever be in a superhero game. I mean, you know he's the villain from literally the very first cutscene. And when your two main opposing villains have such a contrived and predictable story placed right in front of them, that's how you know that something is just a bit wrong. It's honestly disappointing how lackluster these villains are, and considering how cool and intriguing the villains for the last game were. If I'm being real, the best part for me about this story is everything except the villains. Miles coming into his own as Spider-Man, learning to live and get accustomed to his new life and home in Harlem, and the residents within Harlem seeing Miles as their own Spider-Man. There is a straight up Spider-Man 2 reference in the final scene, and if you know what it is, put it in the comments below. I better see someone down in the comments. 
Overall, Spider-Man Miles Morales is a pretty worthy follow-up to Spider-Man PS4. The combat is just as fun, the swinging is the second coming of Jesus H. Christ, and the visuals are amazing. The story isn't as groundbreaking as the original, but it does have enough emotional story beats and enough enjoyable characters to keep you invested throughout. While this game is pretty short, like it doesn't really take you that long to 100% complete it, I'm completely fine with that. If you're expecting this game to be the full-on legit sequel to Spider-Man PS4, th th that's not what this is. It's a spin-off at most. So people, please stop calling this game Spider-Man 2. Calling this game Spider-Man 2 is like calling Uncharted Lost Legacy Uncharted 5. That's something you don't do, because that's not what it is. Anyway, if you disagree or agree with anything I've said, let me know right down there in the comments below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to this Darren and Jamie Productions, and take care.